close your eyes. Take a couple of good long, deep in and out breaths. And notice where you feel the breathing in the body. Focus your attention there. And if long breathing is comfortable, keep it up. If not, you can change. Make it shorter, faster, slower, heavier, lighter, deeper, more shallow. Find a way of breathing that feels good right now. You're trying to gain some control over your mind, which means any thoughts that don't have anything to do with the breath at the moment, you just let them go. Let them go. They can up here. That's their business. It's none of yours for the time being. Your business is the breath. Show some restraint. Today is the 102nd anniversary of a John Sowat's birth. Usually after someone has passed away like that, they don't think about his birthday and they think about his or her day of passing away. But still, we can't help think of him. He's, he's the monk who founded the monastery. It was his vision that enabled this place to get started. And it's inspired us ever since. So it's good to stop and think about him regularly, especially what dharma he left behind, what teachings he left behind. And one of the themes he liked to repeat again and again was the theme of restraint. Here we live in this land of freedom, but we don't want to be tempted by all the opportunities to do unskillful things. We want to make sure that we choose rightly what we do, what we say, what we think. And be very careful about that. As he says, have a filter on your words. Don't be the sort of person who, as soon as something pops into your mind, it comes out your mouth. You have to stop and ask yourself, is this really worth saying? No matter how much you may feel like saying it, you have to be circumspect. Where is this coming from? Where is this, is this sentence coming from? Is it coming from greed, aversion, delusion? If so, you better not say it. And your impulse to say it, where is that coming from? Because oftentimes we simply have a mood and we want to express it. But in expressing it, we just put bad things out into the world. And that's not going to help anybody. It doesn't help us. It doesn't help the people around us. So you have to think not only about where the words are coming from, but also where they're going. What impact they're going to have on other people. Be the sort of person who thinks first and then speaks. Not the sort of person who speaks and then has to think about it afterwards. Because the thinking about it afterwards is usually regret. So if you show some restraint to begin with, that's a treasure. After all, your words are treasures. We'll treat them like gold. Any words that would come up that are not up to the gold standard, you might say, say they're not worth coming out. And when you treat your words as having value, then other people will value your words too. And if you just scatter your words around, again, anything that comes in the mind doesn't go through any filter, just comes right out. It's like scattering sand. Sand doesn't have much use doesn't have much value. What you want is the right word, said at the right time. In terms of the, what the Buddha had to say, make sure that it's true. And then if it's true, make sure it's beneficial. And if it's beneficial, make sure it's the right time and place. Those are words that have value. After all, you went to this trouble of having a human mouth that you can express all kinds of things, or use it to express good things. Or in John Lee's words, bow down to your mouth every day. In other words, treat it with respect. Words have a power. We think of people in the past. Some people had said one or two words and people were ready to kill them. Other people said one or two words and they were able to bring people to peace. So words have a power. Treat them as a treasure, because they are your treasures. What do you have to depend on? When we leave this body at the end of this life, what do we have to depend on? Just our actions, thoughts, words, and deeds. And we'll have lots of words that will contribute to that. We want to make sure they're not loaded down with a lot of sand. If you have just a few words, but they're gold, then they'll be of genuine worth here and on in the future. So be very careful about what you say. Think first. And don't say, well, I'm just the sort of person I say, I say these kinds of things. My speech is kind of coarse. My speech is kind of flippant, whatever. People can change their habits. If people couldn't change their habits, the Buddha wouldn't have bothered to teach. It's because you realize that your actions are causing suffering. You've got to change. That's when you're willing to, ready to listen to the Dharma and benefit from it. So as you treat your actions with value, you open yourself up also to things of higher value.
So try to exercise some restraint. Next time you're tempted to say something that you know is going to get people worked up, just hold your tongue. Tell yourself, okay, I'm practicing a new habit. I'm practicing the habit of valuing my speech, giving value to it. And as I said, when you give value to your speech, other people will value it as well. They're more likely to listen. Listen with respect, because you treat your words with respect. <laughs>